Now, the consulting industry has undergone significant evolution since the establishment of the first modern consulting firms in the 19th century, with management consulting gaining increasing momentum in the business world. In the 20th century, the consulting industry grew exponentially and expanded beyond a few founding partners and small teams to become more internationalized. Now, the African consulting industry initially focused on strategy and management has shown impressive growth estimated at 5 to 7 percent annually within the advisory consulting market. Now, despite representing only 2.2 percent of the global market in 2016, the industry has become increasingly important for investors due to its sustainable impact and return on investments in the region. On the show today, we will focus on the growth of the African consulting industry, uh, attributing it to the socioeconomic factors such as expanding the middle class, the rise of African multinational companies, and improved public and private sector value propositions. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. Just before we get into the discussion proper, we'll start with this uh, feature on how to write an informal proposal. Writing an informal proposal. The thought of writing a proposal overwhelms many people, but the task does not have to be daunting. Informal proposals are written when people need to ask permission to make a purchase, undertake a project or write a paper. This type of proposal is a way of persuasively putting forth an idea and asking for action to be taken on that idea. When writing a proposal, consider who will read the proposal and what that person may or may not already know about what you are proposing. Follow these steps when writing a proposal. 1. State your purpose. Do this clearly and concisely so that the reader knows immediately why you are writing. 2. Give some background information. Explain why you are proposing your suggestion so that the reader has a better understanding of the problem. 3. State a solution to the problem. This is where you give specifics about your suggestion. 4. Show costs. Lay out any costs that will be involved. 5. Conclusion. Wrap it up by restating the problem and the proposed solution. Welcome back to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. My guest, Ula Remwagazie, is the managing partner, founder of Myrtle Management Consultants. She has uh, over 16 years of professional experience and 10 years of experience in consulting across a spectrum of organizations, industries, and economic sectors, both public and private, Nigeria and in the UK. Olari has led and supported several teams and management to design, develop, implement, and monitor their set strategic objectives, as well as key performance indicators, as well as procedures. She is passionate about the need to apply strategic thinking across all decision levels within an organization, as well as achieving a synergy between people, systems, and processes. Her expertise includes HR sourcing and management, performance management, organizational design, business process uh, re-engineering, and digital transformation. Many thanks for joining us, Ulari, on Business Thank Insight. Thank you very much for having me, Justin. Okay, so let me just start this way. Uh, how is the management consulting business uh, uh, keep players uh, smiling to the bank daily? Yes, definitely. It's better how you look at it. Key okay. players, you know, and how you position yourself. Mm. You will definitely fly smart to the bank because there's always the business. Mm. There are too many, like you said in your introduction. Yeah. There's, the, there's more awareness now for the need for consultants. Mm. The increase in the uh, middle class, so people have more uh, capability to pay more recognition for the value that consultants bring to the table okay. uh, because now you see we have more entrepreneurs in the market so mm. definitely there's a need so it depends on how you position yourself mm. and the particular spectrum of consulting that you choose to follow to in, okay. so yes 
Okay, but what can you really say about um, the growth uh, over time, specifically uh, in Nigeria here? That's by management consulting business. So management consulting business, the growth has been, you know, a gradual growth, mm -hmm. but it has become quite significant in recent times in the fact that uh, there's more recognition, there's more awareness. You know, those days people would think that to get a consultant, mm -hmm. they would charge an arm and a leg. Mm. But now people are aware that there are different spectrums. So they don't charge an arm and a leg. They really. still charge an arm and a leg, but <laughs> okay. there are different spectrums. Mm. So you have the multinationals, the international consulting firms. Mm. You also have the indigenous consulting firms at different spheres. Okay. And it all depends on the industry. So you have those focusing on SMEs, MSMEs, of course, mm. and you have those focusing on the multinationals mm. and the mid, you mm. know, uh, corporate businesses, mid-sized corporate businesses. Mm. So definitely, if you're looking for a consultant to solve any problem for you, you can find a consultant at each of those points mm. that still has the expertise level and experience to solve whatever problem that the business is trying to solve. Okay. I'm interested in finding out uh, how you delved into this uh, line of business? Was it something that you've always wanted to do? Uh, can you share your story with us? Okay. My story is very interesting, and I remember it happening when I was 30 years old, okay. <laughs> it was years ago. So I was one of my mentors, and um, I mean, let, let me start the fact that I worked with um, the bank abroad. I started my career in the banking, mm. and then in one of the projects I had with one of the banks I worked with, I had to deal with external consultants. Yeah. So that exposure, that experience got me interested mm. in what consultants do because mostly it's about identifying problems and trying to solve those problems. Mm. And innately also, I would say I have the knack of, you know, being like a misfixit. Okay. I've always been the kind of person that people go to with whatever problems and I just try to solve it. Mm. So that innate and my professional experience and background mm. and the interest I picked in that project uh, now got me interested in it, mm. but I it was it the transition came when I sat down with one of my mentors mm. and he said, but you know you should do this because you're good at it because I was really doing it as a banker helping the businesses I worked with mm. to solve problems mm. going above and beyond just managing their funds you sure. get so and he said you're good at it so why don't you explore it and I said oh that's interesting and then I mean he put a word to it by being the first client I had he gave me the first brief. He referred me to people, and then he just caught fire like that. Oh, wow. Very interesting. Okay, so uh, let me just put it that way for those uh, who are watching and might just be wondering uh, why or if they really do need uh, the services of a management consultant. Uh, uh, how important would you say uh, is the role of a management consultancy to an average from be it um, a small business? Be it a big business, be it a small business, Management consultants are very important, and there are different spectrums. Mm. So you have IT consulting, okay. you have marketing and PR consulting, mm. you have um, operations consulting, you have strategy consulting. That's a whole you lot. Have, there's a whole lot. So yeah. you have HR consulting. Mm. Of course, you have the oldest in the game, which mm. is financial consulting, because they've been there. Mm. They are the ones that everybody already knew that you need a financial consultant. Yeah to help you. And even with the, the rise of the tax law and all of mm. that, the new tax laws, mm. it's not even important to have them advise you and guide you so you don't make any mistakes. Mm. You have even now, very popular, becoming very popular, wellness and health you know, care consultants. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, so wow. at different spectrums, at one point of any business, mm. you definitely, especially as you aspire to grow. Mm. And I mean, one of the opportunities, the, the market, the horizon is becoming bigger every day. Mm. Technology is playing a role. And so many companies don't even understand how technology is transforming, even or it is going to transform their business, mm. or it is already transforming their business. Mm. So at these different spectrums that I mentioned, mm. a management consultant will guide you. They will provide strategic insight. They will mm. provide expert you know, advice. Mm. If you're experiencing a problem, I always tell people, before you go into the venture, actually yeah. go in with a consultant. Mm. Because that actually when it's a good one anyway. Because yeah. they're able to guide you. Yeah. They would open your eyes to you know, horizons that you didn't see. They would help you to set up a structure, a system, mm. and put in place... Because they are used to working with different organizations. Right. So naturally, they've come across several best practices. Mm. So before you even jump in, mm. you work with a consultant and then minimize the problems, the challenges you will see along the way, one, the issues you will face along the way, two, the mistakes you generally would have made, three, and then 
save you money because if you go through that whole route mm. making mistakes not oh, and, from and, them as well. and learning from them and many times they are also they inspire you because they've seen these challenges already mm. so most times the business people you know entrepreneurs will be like ah oh, i want to give up i'm so tired i'm so, so stressed just give like a sense of direction they'll give you a sense of direction they will inspire you and say okay this is how you're going to solve this particular problem okay so it makes doing business easier Very than easy. it would have without the consultant okay so i was going to ask uh, the opportunities available in the sector but you have actually uh, broken down um, the the spectrum we talked about uh, hr consulting it uh, uh, even wellness and fitness. Okay, but the question right now would be if uh, it is an all commerce affairs or if uh, it's something you could just uh, dive into. Because before now, we used to hear of uh, the, uh, the Kimberly Ryan of this world, the PWCs and the Deloitte. But right now, we have uh, uh, small uh, consultants coming up by idea and actually. Uh, at taking care of people with tailored needs and never tailored needs rather. So what do you really need to be a consultant? Because I'm sure it's not just everyone that can be a management consultant. Yes, not everyone can be a management consultant because one of it is the fact that you have to be agile, mm. you have to be flexible. And I mean, in as much as you have the interest, the passion to mm. solve problems, you need to be extremely knowledgeable. Mm. So learning is a breeding process for you as a consultant. You will never stop learning. And you must always be ahead of the game mm -hmm. so read voraciously you know oh, wow. you must read voraciously you must read um you know scholarly um art articles yeah. both university and those written by others not, not in university space you must be a researcher mm -hmm. because in-depth researching so and you need to know where to find the information that you need in the first place mm -hmm. then of course you need to be flexible because you're not going to have the same type of clients okay. every time. So you need to know how to deal with different type of people. So you know when people say, I'm a people person, I'm a people person. If you're a consultant, you must be a people person mm. because you will deal with all manner of personalities. Mm. So you need to be able to, you know, manage them, think ahead of them mm. because you must, they will arrive at the problem. True. So before they arrive at the problem, the consultant is the think, kind of person that has to think of what's going to happen if, if this happens. happens yeah. You must be somebody who is a risk Oh, person wow. so understand risk management, and management yeah. very yeah. well because every single activity has a risk don't ever take it for granted that okay. you know and then of course very importantly you'll be pro proactive okay. you must be proactive to survive as a management consultant all right it yeah. is uh, still business insights on plus tv africa we're looking at the business of uh, management consulting and uh, my guest uh, Olai Mwagaze is still with me i'll take a quick break and that uh, business insight returns in a moment to join us again All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I still have uh, Olai Wagazi with me, and we're looking at a uh, business consultancy in the country and Africa at large and how far the sector has grown or is growing. Thanks for staying with me. Thank you very much. Okay, from what I read, uh, the industry uh, growth rate in Africa uh, between 2021 and 2026 is forecast to be 7.84%, uh, which is reflected in the growth of uh, the market growth in Nigeria. But how can you uh, uh, explain or how can you, uh, or management consultant, help clients tackle complex challenges and achieve lasting results? For instance, uh, you talked about... Uh, uh, having foresight and seeing uh, problems even before they occur. But uh, some people, they might have like um, very complex challenges and they don't even know where to start. For instance, uh, they, uh, let me just paint a scenario. They have uh, issues with uh, managing human resources and they are also thinking of uh, uh, digitizing, you know, their, their processes. So how would you be able as a management consultant to just wade in and know just how to turn around them the fortunes and the processes of the company when they have various challenges yes thank you very much for that so first thing to do always when you go into any consultant venture is to have a diagnostics mm. of the organization so you guys play doctors as well yes <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, all right. so there are certain questions you would ask which are organized set of questions mm. if it's for hr problems there are business diagnostics, you know, yeah. questions that you can ask. And then the response to these questions would help you identify the most salient issues and give you a project plan as well, which is most important for you to start with. Yeah. And of course, 
you, they would need to have a, a goal. You can help them to define their strategic goal in terms of where they're headed to mm -hmm. at a particular time. So that whichever problems you identify in line with the goals that they have, you can then come up with a plan, mm -hmm. you know, an action plan for this is where you are as an RCs mm -hmm. and this is where you want to be, right? So okay. for us to go from here to here, based on the issues we've seen on ground, based on where you want to go to with your strategic plan, these are the things that we need to do. These are the things that we need to implement because those things will bring out issues like are there policies in place? Are there procedures in place? People, have they been trained? Mm. Do they have the right skills? Is there a skills, a skills gap? Yeah. Is there a manpower gap? Is there a leadership problem? What are the cultures mm. in place? Because all of those key things, when identified mm. and, are, you know, and resolved, can help them then achieve whatever goal that they have. And okay. this can always be at different spectrums for any organization. They will never be the same. Yeah. And that's the most interesting thing about the job. So there's no one size uh, fit. There's no or... one. No, you can't do a one size fits approach for. You know, yeah. you can't. But they are, they are defined. You know, processes yeah. as a management consultant to mm -hmm. follow, with expertise that you can deploy for whichever organization. Okay, you've been around um, the business for a very long time. Uh, from my intro, about um, sixteen years mm -hmm. of experience uh, and beyond. Uh, so. I'm sure the, the sector has its own share of um, challenges and, and threats, uh, just like we have in other sectors. Can you share some of them uh, with us? Or maybe while you, uh, your experiences are while working, maybe with some client and how you were able to overcome those um, threats and challenges. Okay, so I'll go from generic to specific. Okay. So generic is the fact that every management consulting is a rising competition. Mm. We can't sleep on it because... Sleeping on it means that there's a new consultant coming out to take that business. Take because, for example, if the likes, the big boys knew that mm. the indigenous firms would rise up like this, mm. I'm sure they would have done more. So you always have rising competition. And then within the rising competition is the fact that you would have to even compete within yourself mm. in the fact that you must be technologically compliant mm. and aware and keep upgrading yourself, your skills, your experiences. So we find as a challenge that if you're a consultant and you don't, you're not aware of competition, then you wouldn't, you know, thrive. Secondly, you must be aware and imbibe technology. And the fact that most consultants still think that it is something far away because mm. I still see some people, for example, recruiters having a, a consulting firm at Gmail, you know, they are not using things like automated processes for mm. their recruitment. Mm. So many consultants within the system, so I said generic, are not aware of automation technology True. that is involved in upskilling and upgrading their businesses. True. So if they don't become aware of that, they'll definitely go away. Mm. But generally, again, the other problems you have are the fact that most times the scope will always change. Mm. It's a major problem. You know, scopes will always change. The client will tell you, this is what I want and this is how I want it. And then along the way, things start flying left and right. So yeah. as a consultant, you must know how to have the discipline and be able to, you know, discipline the client to yeah. stay you within scope. You can also discipline the client. You have to discipline <laughs> the client to stay within scope. Why are they even paying the money? <laughs> Well, there has, okay. because there has to be a defined scope. If not, okay. everything goes everywhere, and mm. then you never have a defined result at okay. the end. Mm. Then there's an issue. Then, of course, like every business in Nigeria, most businesses in Nigeria, mm. you face the fact that, and it's because not really, of course, there might be the integrity issues every business person would face. Yeah. Because even a retail business faces integrity of the of the customer paying for the good that they have bought, right? Okay. So it's the same thing with consulting space. Mm. You might face people that, don't have the integrity to pay for mm. services that they've rendered mm. and they just expect you to pour out all these nice ideas in your head mm. and then move along with it okay so uh let me just uh try and squeeze something out of you any specifics you want to share as far, yeah so while working on um, client and that where it may be a bit difficult and how were you able to surmount it uh, there are so many um <laughs> so many so many so mm. many let me not bug you with that. Okay. You know, but let's talk about um, the prospect and the future of a management consulting. How do you see uh, the business uh, in the next, uh, in the short term, uh, medium term, and maybe long term? Maybe five, from five to ten years. You see, the business is, is thriving, and there are so many opportunities, mm. especially with things like the African, um, the after, after mm. the African uh, free, free, trade yeah, agreement. free Trade Agreement. That means that we, as the businesses, are also going beyond borders. Mm. Consultants are also going to go beyond so you borders. Position yourself. Position yourself. Well. Yes. Position yourself to go beyond borders. Mm. 
every organization needs a consultant at one point or the other. Mm. And the, you find that most times the small businesses, the small consultants, I find it difficult to get into the big companies. Mm. And the opportunities are there, mm. but you need to be documented, heavily documented, mm. so with your your regulatory compliance and everything. Mm. So the opportunity is there. So the business is also regulated? Yes. Oh, tell me about it. You have uh, the Internet, the manage, in Institute of Management Consultants oh, okay. and several other bodies that mm. regulate. Of course, you have the... There are different hierarchies of regulation. At different levels, yeah. Yeah, different levels. But yes, it's uh, highly regulated. For example, if you're a recruiter, you need to have a recruiter's license. You can't just recruit. Mm -hmm. the, and that you get it from Ministry of Labor. So oh, it's, wow. it's... Yeah, at different levels, there are... Um, different, uh, different yes. If you're an IT consultant, mm. you need to uh, work with uh, the the IT agency mm. of the government. So okay. they are all regulated at different levels. Yes. Uh, so, finally, let's talk about uh, automation, uh, the IT tech, and everything. How has it uh, been able to evolve the way uh, business consulting is done in Nigeria, and how um, has it also improved uh, the processes or the processes uh, involved? Uh, in management consulting so yes just like i was almost to about to say automation has helped businesses a lot so mm -hmm. recruitment for example can be seamless um, tax management is also seamless mm -hmm. so you have different tax management tools you have different project management tools there are different products i wouldn't you know start mentioning but just type project management tools on mm -hmm. the internet you have different ones that has helped you know consulting firms to be more effective mm -hmm. and be more organized and the fact that you can actually work with different teams, both Nigeria and outside Nigeria, or mm. within Nigeria or outside Africa, um, you know, and that's the that's another opportunity because with automation comes the fact that your service can now be mm. exported, okay. and that's the future of you know consulting uh, for consulting in Nigeria. We have the opportunity to actually now start exporting mm. our services also. All right. So uh, I said we're running off, but just one final question. I just want you to help. Uh, maybe a struggling a business consultant because I've had stories of uh, uh, some consultants saying they're trying to, you know, stay above our, you know, debt and their clients not paying and they're even thinking of uh, maybe some sort of different uh, direction. You know, what would you say to someone now who is a consultant and over time uh, he has been struggling? Okay, the struggles are various, right? Mm. But just hanging on what you said in terms of the fact that maybe clients are not paying mm. or they're not getting enough briefs, yes. one of them would be the fact that they should use digital marketing okay. and be found. Mm. There's, you know, there's the Google business. Okay. So be found. Mm. Invest also mm. in marketing your consulting business. All right. Be knowledgeable because mm. there's no point marketing the business and then you show up and then you don't have any, um, you know, knowledge about what you're trying to deal with. True. I usually tell people, and I did it also, mm. if it means you're going into an, a, an experienced consulting firm yeah. and working as an intern, you can go in there. Mm. That would give you a wealth of experience. So internship is actually encouraged. Internship is encouraged, yes, okay. and it's good for you. Right. And then, as much as possible, try to get retainer, mm. you know, relationships. And then have different plans okay. for different businesses. Right. Come up with a, a, a service plan. Mm. I offer the service, but I have different categories for okay. it. Therefore, you can find different people at mm. different niche all to right. buy your service. Thank you so much, uh, Olari, for all of the useful and wonderful insight that you have brought on the show today. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much, Justin. My have pleasure. Yeah, my guest has been uh, Olari Morgan, the managing partner, founder of Metal Management Consultants. As we go on the show today, there is an urgent need to incentivize medical practitioners in the country to reduce the brain drain challenge and by extension tackle medical tourism. This was a consensus by speakers at an event which seeks to impact lives through access to affordable health care. I'll leave you with details of that report. I am Justin Akadonia. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Association says the country is now battling with its worst situation of brain drain as no fewer than 10,000 Nigerian trained doctors are currently practicing in the United Kingdom. To add to this dilemma, Nigerians seem to have a trust issue with getting medical services in the country. At this gathering, the focus is to provide an avenue for Nigerians to get world class health care at affordable cost. Um, so that when we talk about the standard of healthcare in Lagos, we're talking about access, 
Yeah, uh, to all spectra of the society, from low to middle to higher uh, socio-economic groups, and that we have put in place um, these kinds of standards, uh, where we are talking about one standard of care. Today's um, prevailing economic climate, um, both in Nigeria and abroad, the idea that um, individuals can simply jet off abroad is becoming um, an increasingly um, unrealistic prospect. Uh, never mind um, the millions of the 200 million Nigerians who never had that option in the first place. So all of that, plus what happened over COVID, has forced us to look inwards. And, uh, and that's where the story of reversing medical tourism begins. Many Nigerians have lost confidence in the country's health system because of the poor service delivery. Some, however, believe the challenge can be solved from top bottom. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, may have walked in that direction. However, the Lagos State Government says it is imperative to have a strategic initiative to make the city a medical tourism hub. We need to begin to think um, very carefully, very creatively about how we ensure that we incentivize um, uh, doctors, healthcare professionals to stay in this country and to return to this country. We need to begin to think also about how we use our allied health care professional. And so our job in Lagos is to make sure that there's a standard of care across both private and public and that when people talk about health care delivery in Lagos that they speak with confidence, you know, that if I receive my treatment in Lagos, I know I'm going to get international best practices in that particular discipline. Interestingly, apart from lack of equipment and technical expertise, poor sanitation and disrespectful attitude of health workers and a perceived lack of confidentiality have been the sad narrative. This regardless, experts are confident that the tide is changing.